Hey, and welcome to another data structures video. And this time we're going to be talking about doubly linked lists with the implementation using Sentinel nodes. And we'll get to what those are shortly. First off, what is a doubly linked list? Well, it basically allows for traversing forwards and backwards in a linked list. A singly linked list only allowed you to traverse forwards because it held a reference only to the next node in the list, not the previous. Here, as you can see, a doubly linked list has a reference to the next node in the list and the previous. So there are three total references per node now, one to the value it's holding, to the next reference in the list, and to the previous. So what are Sentinel nodes? Well, very simple, they're just dummy nodes. They don't hold any value, and here we have a header and a trailer. So these Sentinel nodes will always be there. They will not be removed, and they'll also never hold data. They're really here just to simplify the logic and code uh, for a doubly linked list. So what are the advantages of using Sentinel nodes? Well, as I said, the header and trailer are just dummy nodes. They'll never hold data, and we're always going to insert and delete nodes between these Sentinel nodes. So the, what we're going to do is have a generic remove and insertion method because, because we're always adding a node or deleting it in between nodes no matter where we're at. You're never going to add node before the header sentinel node, and you're never going to add one after the trailer sentinel node. They're there for that reason, so that we can simplify the code to always add a node in between other nodes. OK, so let's talk about inserting a node in a doubly linked list. So in linked list A, we just have a doubly linked list with two nodes, one holding a value of 10 and one holding a value of 6. In linked list B, we're trying to insert a node in between those two nodes. All right, so let's take a look at the algorithm to see how this works. So first off, we're going to name it add between because we have Sentinel nodes in our implementation of a doubly linked list. We're always adding a node in between uh, two other nodes. So we're going to pass in the value we want it to store, and we're going to pass in uh, two nodes. The first one is going to be uh, the one before the insertion, and the next one is going to be the one after the insertion. So in step one, we're creating a new node. Uh, the first argument is going to be the value we pass in. The second argument is going to be the previous reference to the node before the insertion. And then the third argument is the next node, the next reference to the node after the insertion. All right. And so step two and three we're taking the, the previous node before the insertion, setting its next reference to the newest one. And in the node after the insertion, we're setting its previous reference to the newest one. OK? Then obviously, we have to increase the size of the list. So now if we go back to uh, doubly linked list B, this is indicating that uh, on the node we're inserting, we're setting its next reference to the node after the insertion, and we're setting its previous reference to the node before the insertion. Um, the node before and after the insertion still have references to each other, and that's what we have to eliminate. When we get to linked list C, we have to change those references to the new node. All right, let's take a look at removing a node from a doubly linked list. So just like inserting, we have a general utility remove method since we're using Sentinel nodes. We're always going to be removing a node between two other nodes. So let's look at linked list A. This just this just stores three nodes in a doubly linked list. Now, when we get to B, what we're going to be doing is removing the middle node, the one that's holding a value of two. So what we need to do here, because this is just the reverse of whenever we were inserting, we need to change the references of the node before and after. Uh, the node that we're removing, OK? So if we take a look at the algorithm, all we're going to pass in is the node that we want to remove. So this is requires a couple more steps. But uh, what we're going to be using is what's called a predecessor and successor. Predecessor is what's before the node, and successor is after it. So we're going to say predecessor is equal the node we're trying to move, um, what's its previous node? So node.getPreve is what we're setting to the predecessor variable. Successor is the same thing, except it's going to be the node after um, the node we're trying to remove. OK? And the reason we're doing this is because we need to change the references to eliminate them from knowing the node we're trying to remove. 
So the node before the node we're trying to remove, we're going to set its next reference to the successor, which is the node after the removal of the node we want to take care of. And so in step four, the successor, we're going to set its previous node to the node before the one that we want to remove. And of course, we have to decrement the size, and then this this algorithm is going to return the value of the node that we we're trying to remove. All right. So if we go back to linked list B, this is exactly what we're doing. We're changing the references to the node before and after the node we want to remove, and then when we get to linked list C. Since those references to the node we want to remove don't exist anymore, it's gone. All right. Okay, so let's finish up with big O notation. So again, this is just um, what's the time to perform the algorithm as it grows with the size of the input? That's called time complexity. We're also going to be looking at the space complexity as well when, um, at, the, at the end. So we only, we only care about average and worst. We don't care about best. Um, so let's take a look at accessing and searching first. Accessing is the same as indexing. And just like linked lists in general, because they're not stored, in contiguous memory, they can't be indexed. So whenever we're accessing, we still have to traverse, we still have to traverse the list in order to find the node that we want. All right, we have to traverse through the pointers in memory to get to the node that hold the value that we care about. And the same thing for searching. So these are big O of n or linear time, because the time it takes to perform uh, these algorithms is proportional to the size of the input as it increases. Okay. So if we look, take a look at insertion and deletion next. Um, insertion, whenever we find the node, when we find the place in the linked list where we want to insert a node, it's always going to be big O of one because every node has a reference uh, to its predecessor and its successor. So before and after it. So it's easy to manipulate the references when we know the surrounding nodes from the one we want to insert or remove. Okay, so insertion and deletion have constant times for their operations in a doubly linked list, because when we find it, even though it can be confusing, because in order to find it is big O of n, but in order to actually execute this operation for inserting or deleting, it's only big O of one. Again, because we know we have pointers. To the nodes before and after, whether we're inserting or deleting. Okay. Now the same goes for worst case. The worst case is we have to traverse the whole list, which is just big O of n anyways. And but inserting and deleting are still going to be big O of one, no matter what. Okay. So it leaves us with space complexity, and we're just working with uh, we're just working with the size of uh, of the doubly linked list. So there's no uh, other space, there's no store, other storage needed uh, to perform these algorithms, so it's just big O of n. Okay. Well, I hope you've learned something, and if you have any questions or comments, I will get back. I will get back to you as soon as possible, and I'll see you next time.